All right, this video here, I'm continuing on. So I still haven't edited anything, so I don't know exactly where, where I am with this. Uh, it's Saturday morning. I'm uh, gonna go to the parts store. This tire down here that you can't see is going flat, so I gotta use my O rewards and go get some of the uh, slime stuff so I can fix the tire. My problem is the connector here is melted. Okay? And it has melted because of uh, heat. I was blowing a fuse and if you can see right here, I'm going to pull this off. It was blowing this fuse that was a uh, 20 amp fuse and with my uh, kit, my AES Wave, it comes with a uh, test adapter that will plug into the fuse. I can put a current clamp around this and in this case I've upped it to 30 uh, ohms and indeed it ran the solenoids working fine but it started to heat. This wire right here was starting to overheat which is the one that was uh, melting. It's been doing that for a while. So somewhere in here I got a short on the circuit or uh, another pro problem in the wiring harness. Can you see down here? Maybe so, at the end of my finger. This is a uh, the wire where I fixed it for the last time in a much better way and it uh, worked for a while and then eventually failed. So there's a short or something I'm going to have to go down and take a look and you'll be with me. But with the two wires that are normally connected together, these two short, to get the blade uh, to go, and I'll demonstrate that here in, in a few minutes. But the first thing I wanted to do was to measure the resistance. This provides uh, a voltage that goes, most likely the positive, to the, uh, when the contacts are made, provides the current to drive the solenoid. So measuring across the whole circuit, I have my meter set to, uh, that one won't work, I'll have to set it here, uh, resistance, and it's an overload now, which means it's greater than 60 mega ohms. And I'm going to put the device in between, actually here's what I'm going to do, because it needs to be precise, I'm going to go like this on the meter you can see it says uh, 0.3 ohms I'm gonna hit relative so now I'm zeroed so I will know what the actual resistance is of the whole circuit okay there and here okay I have 2.3 ohms and there is a uh, resistance tolerance uh, for this. I'll have to go look that up. That may be on the low side. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is get a different set of probes and measure it with a different set of probes because here we're reaching 2.2 .2 ohms and uh, that's kind of I think low. Let me go look and uh, find out. I'm going to turn this off. See if I turn it back on, an interesting thing here is it'll look higher because we didn't hit the relative to zero it out. And of course that is totally incorrect because it's counting and adding in the resistance of the solenoid as it is. So let me go make sure of my measurements here. Okay, the setting uh, should be 2 to 4 ohms. 
I went and I got from my AES Wave kit uh, two test leads. And what I'm going to do is to set these up. This is a different type of contact, so it's going to share more surface area with the, uh, the, the connection. All right, not that it should be a big deal, but I'm going to make sure that I have something more uh, precise because we're right there at the margin, which is why that it gets hot and starts to melt and is blowing fuses is my first speculation or it is a possibility okay I'm gonna come here short the two together now that says it's uh, these are point two okay uh, I'm going to make it relative okay all right slide this in good fit this one feels a little loose okay but sitting there it is 2.2 ohms so that's within the 2 to 4 but it's on the low end I'm going to think about how I can test this further but uh, right now I have to go to the store. I see a drop of engine oil. So I don't know if my lower seal's uh, dying or not. As you can see, this looks relatively clean because I blew it off with the uh, sprayer. But uh, I'm going to lift this up. The next you'll see it, I'll have the jacks on it. And what I'm going to do is pull, the solenoid is down below, the connection there and take some more measurements. So you will see that uh, shortly and uh, next, but I need to go to the store to get uh, slime to fix that tire. Okay, so let me uh, go do it. We'll be back in just a snap. Turning on the light. I used a screwdriver remove the connector here I've sprayed it clean because there's a lot of oil there I don't know where the leak was I tighten this up and I think I've fixed the leak <coughs> I'll have to check it next year I'm certain this will come back here to Alabama next year now I'm gonna check the wire harness connecting the wire harness here it's a uh, wide open because the solenoid's not in circuit. So what I'm going to do is short the circuit once I get a couple probes. I got two little screwdrivers holding our end. I'm going across basically the two units, I hope you can see, connected to the switch. It would be connected to the switch I got 1.9 ohms and that's not metering everything out but basically it's an ohm. If we were measuring 2 ohms, 2.2 ohms through the whole circuit, the resistance in the uh, solenoid which is down below would be would be uh, less than 2 ohms. Now I'm going to go below and take the measurement from the solenoid. All right, I had to go below and uh, hook up different uh, probes. These are the types that are currently on a connector, uh, not on the connector, on the uh, solenoid. Once connected, we have the answer to our problem. Right there we have 1.1 ohms and that's directly on the solenoid. So it is, uh, it is shorted. The uh, needs to be between 2 and 4 ohms. Now let's see, at uh, 1 ohm and if you have a 12 volt battery you're going to pull 12 amps. If it's running at uh, 14 
volts or 14.6, you're going to be pulling 14 amps, which is why things are heating up. If you're at, uh, say, 3 ohms, you'd be at a third of that, which would be uh, less, or if you were at uh, 4 ohms, it would be yet again a quarter of that. So you'd be pulling 3 amps, which is much less. So with pulling more heat with the lower resistance or why things are heating up. So I'm going to get one of these on order. I'm going to drop this one and get a replacement. Okay, so we know what the problem is. That's a good thing. Okay, and let me just turn this back on. And even if your meter wasn't uh, zeroed, if you didn't use the relative setting, you would still see that it's indeed shorted. So I'm going to get the pneumatics out, pop this puppy off, and uh, I'm going to get one on order first. Uh, thank you. This is a D170. Okay. This one's also, I think, was on a 2006 mower. I saved it in case we had one break, and we did have one break. It went on this unit. There are three of these at the house that we run and just wear out. So get the same type of brand, as close to the same thing, 54-inch decks. <clears throat> I think the new one's an E170, not a uh, D. All righty. So let me uh, get that on order, and we'll show you it uh, when it's uh, replaced. All right, here's the unit. Uh, it fell right out once I uh, loosened it up. It fell right down, just like that. No issue whatsoever. Got the part on order. Had some water in it, the resistance is still off. She's a broke. So I got a replacement part coming. So this is going to be the end of part one. There will be a part two in a week or two. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.